I would like to introduce Heis Werner, Director of Marketing and Distribution for our Basics Business Unit. Heis brings over 25 years of connector industry experience in interconnect solutions, international management, business development, and strategic marketing. Thank you for joining us today, Heis. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, Greta. And then thanks, everybody, for joining this webinar about a exciting, very exciting new development we have uh, launched uh, not so long ago, which is called uh, Densis Tech, and which is really uh, meeting requirements and anticipating the needs for uh, applications related to artificial intelligence. And that's, of course, a very hot topic we're confronted with every single day. So let's 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 get started. Um, this um, webinar is brought to you by the Basics Business Unit of Amphenol Communication Solutions, one of the larger business units with a very large uh, portfolio of um, proven technology, leading edge technology for 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 PCB interconnect. So whether it's you know from the left hand side, whiteboard core as we call it, um, proven standard products for for many different kind of applications. Um, e-mobility products related to specifically battery management systems, uh, automotive lighting, uh, or everything that moves, basically. We have a very nice portfolio of input-output and FFC, FFC connectors, backplane connectors added recently, uh, and board-to-board. -board. I mean, that's something we will be uh, talking of um, today. Um, so really great family to, to really um, help customers succeed with PCB, um, connection solutions. These connectors, all of these connectors are being developed for what I would refer to as demanding applications. So that, those are applications where performance and specifications matter. So think about, if you look at the lower left, yeah, automotive kind of applications where vibration resistance is key, high operating temperatures, similar to industrial IT data comb where speed comes into play, of course, and also consumer. Um, but then higher end consumer, think about the $1,000 uh, dollar vacuum cleaners yeah, or home automation system, those kind of things. Um, so board to board being expanded um, and, and you know, obviously for all those product lines, we continue to invest and to continue to expand our portfolio. Density stack, I mean, it's all your name, right? This is a new high pin count, high density mezzanine connector. And don't worry, I mean, I'm not going to provide you today like a standard product uh, training. I mean, that will be in the package. You will find the links to our website. What I would like to do today is give you a little bit more background why did we develop this and why this differentiates from other solutions in the market and which applications this might apply to. Um, so you can clearly see, right, I mean, okay, this is something you've seen before. Um, it's, it's a multiple row high density system, but, but there's more to it. Um, um, specifically because it's aimed at a demanding ap application. Yeah, it has some attributes uh, which I will explain during the presentation. More importantly, I mean, maybe to share why we developed this connector, right? We developed this connector to meet the needs um, for advanced driver assistance systems. Um, we all know that, you know, cars are becoming more... Um, advanced, right, with a lot of um, systems helping to um, become uh, autonomous, right? And 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 if you talk about ADAS, yeah, it ADAS is not one system, right? It's a set of systems. It's 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 radar systems, it's camera systems, uh, all, yeah, all and they all work together. And the the essence is, and that's why we developed uh, density stack. I mean, they all work together. Uh, if you look lower right onto that automated automated uh, driving module or central computer, that's where it all happens, right? That's where all, everything comes together, and that that central computer needs to decide um, on all the functionality of 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 the car. Um, and if you look at uh, ADAS, I mean, you know, I guess you know from all from our first car, right? We had no automation. Um, today's cars, I mean, there is like, uh, quite some driver assistance systems, right? I mean, even like a cruise control is a driver assistance system. Um, cruise controls have become um, um, active or adaptive cruise control. We see more automation coming. Also in uh, not only the high-end cars, I mean, uh, Tesla's of course are like a very good example of being like, you know, market leader, all those kind of uh, systems, but also like um, 
and the more economical uh, versions um, uh, tend to become more or highly automated, actually. And it is, yeah, because of all of those subsystems, uh, cameras, uh, uh, long range, short range radars, and, and, and so on. Um, and as I mentioned, I mean, that all comes together, right? Um, that all comes together in the uh, autonomous driving card. Yeah, on, on that card, um, that's where all the artificial intelligence chips are. Um, there are a couple of um, companies developing those chips. Yeah, um, and what they have come up with is like a lot of functionality in these chips, and what they need, what they require, is high density connectors. Um, speeds are not like crazy, right? If you compare it to IT Datacom, uh, but they need a certain amount of speed, and they also have a requirement for for power, and so power and signal in one connector to support developments, to support current developments and future developments. And as you can see from the lower right, you know, if you look at that uh, autonomous driving card, um, that has the, 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 the need requirement for multiple different uh, higher speed signal uh, protocols um, to, be, um, to be connected. Yeah? And the whole idea is of course, to combine it in one connector, because if you combine it in, let's say two board to board connectors, by default, you create a challenge, right? Especially for an automotive application where there is vibration into play and, and changing temperatures, you create a tolerance issue, right? If you have two board to board connectors on one PCB uh, connecting uh, a, a let's, let's call it a mezzanine card, by default, you have that problem. Yeah? So that's why there is this need for a high pink out, high density connector. So while discussing uh, this with the chip makers, I mean, they came with the following requirements on the right, right? They really wanted to have something which is shock and vibration proof. And a, a really standard uh, way of testing that is by means of following the US car um, uh, testing requirements. And, what, uh, and typically for these kind of application, a US car, to V2 is, is a, well, let's call it almost like a standard um, requirements for these kind of applications, because it's a central computer in a car. Up to a thousand contacts they wanted to have. Very importantly, easy to process. Um, easy to process, and this is also coming from the contract manufacturers, because a lot of this stuff is being done. A lot of these boards are being built by contract manufacturers, and, and they like efficient, easy, easy processing. Um, speeds, like I already mentioned, not crazy, 16 gigabits. Yeah? They want to have current ratings being transferred up to 3 amps. So the requirement was basically, oh, we like, we'd like to assign some pins to, to current. Well, you know, we don't think that's a good idea to assign pins. That can also be done in, in a different way. We will show you. Very importantly, to offer design freedom. So I have an open pin field um, uh, design. So that means yeah, there is no designated ground or signal pins or different in shape and form and, and functionality. No, it's all the same kind of um, pins uh, in this uh, connector, which you can assign either to a ground or a signal. And of course, high, high temperature up to 125 degrees. So this was the starting point for us to, to start uh, developing um, a density stack. Um, and what we decided to do is to, in order to meet those requirements is really at the core of this connector density stack, well, and basically at the, the core of any connector is the contact system, yeah, is to design a really reliable a dual beam contact system. So you can clearly see on this, this picture in the middle, right, the receptacle has on both sides has a, a, a contact surface. So this is really a good, reliable dual beam um, design, which is, which offers great shock and vibration resistance. So that's tick the box. That's one of the requirements we met. Also, we learned from, by talking to component engineers um, that, you know, other products in the market have some challenges. Yeah. They have some challenges because of signal discontinuity. Uh, that's because of their um, single beam uh, contact system. In other words, great products, yeah, but not suited for automotive applications because if there's vibration and temperature changes into, into play, this is typically what, what happens, right? If you are in an IT datacom environment, in a air-conditioned environment, I mean, then it's a complete different uh, uh, playing field. 
Um, so that is something that dual beam system um, um, overcomes. Um, and also what we learned from, you know, other products in the market that the true positioning was not always easy, right? I mean, automotive customers like to assemble, like to assemble board automatically, right? And if you have a product which is not completely fully aligned, which does, does not offer some, you know, um, some, some freedom, some, some tolerances uh, uh, during mating, you are creating a, a problem, especially again, uh, after assembly when fabrication comes into play. Another element, another element, important element of Bensi stock is that we decided not to um, develop a bulk grid array soldering system, right? This is a very common way, very common IT data com, uh, but we really um, insisted on developing a service mount solution. Service mount solution, because like I already said, contract manufacturers, they don't like so much BGA, especially if you go um not only long is not a problem but if you go white yeah because heat dissipation um and so under that uh, connector uh, with bulk grid array is much more critical than as for for surplus months yeah? hence not easy to solder i mean if you control the process very well yes it's doable uh, but if you go wider it becomes kind of a risk yeah um, so that's why we did um, uh, service mount. Another aspect, if we're talking about the um, context system of, of density stack, is the fact, I mean, you have multiple positions, right? You have thousand positions, which might um, um, uh, result in very high mating forces. So what we did, we assigned, uh, we developed three different pin lengths, as you can see on the left-hand side, yeah, to, to allow for lower mating and obviously also uh, lower un unmating forces. Important small attribute with uh, quite a lot of wipe, of course, to ensure the contacts being cleaned uh, before a final mating. Um, also important, important with these kind of connectors, of course, is the the guidance we offer. The, uh, the guidance we offer um, for for mating, and especially to protect the pins during mating. I mean, this is um, suitable for. Uh, automatic mating, yeah? so a robot can place the uh, the board um, um, with all the chips because that's typically what you want to add to a application in the one of the last steps yeah? because it's the most expensive uh, part of a application in the last steps of the process. So automatic mating is possible. Um, it's polarized, so there's no way you can um, reverse mate, uh, and especially there's no way you can damage the pins during during mating. Um, and it also also offers self alignment, so that means in x and y direction you can move. Uh, you have a little bit of tolerance to 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 uh, the connector will find its way in the correct mating position. So, this connector supports so um, uh, with high density uh, up to one thousand thirty four positions. It supports high speed PCI four. Generation four, 16 gigabits. It's hybrid and has an optional power shield. So in in order to transfer current, yeah, I mean, a good way to do that is by means of the shield. Um, and, and on the right hand side, you see this, uh, this, this uh, shield being um, um, shown. This can also be a partial shield. So if you want to have like, uh, uh, so this is basically is for four, uh, so four sides of the connector, it's for four, um, let's call it groups of, of power to be transferred, it can also be more, right? We can sp or split so you will be a shield and you have more uh, power signals. It's much better than going over uh, uh, to, then to, to assign certain pins. I mean, you need quite a lot of pins uh, to assign for, for power in this case. Um, and, and yeah, you can see from, maybe if I see from the image, it's, it's an open pin field design. So all the contacts are the same. So you can assign your grounds, your signals, et cetera. And of course, officially we have some guidance for that. Um, how to to um, how to do that? Stack heights. I mean, currently we have tools in a eight millimeter version, but we have the design ready to go up to even thirty and three zero millimeters, which is quite some stack height for this this um, this this kind of uh, connectors. The yeah, the the pitch as you can see, it's it's a, a a special grid, and it has everything to do with the you know how we can uh, assign uh, grounds and signals of this connector. To highlight some of the um, uh, product specifications, I mean, 
again, all you can find on our web in the product presentation, etc. right? The essence is it's a high density connector. Yeah, so up to 2,034 uh, positions, but also we can go small, yeah? Uh, just uh, less than um, 200, 198 uh, positions, which makes it also interesting for other applications with chipsets yeah, where not that many of signals uh, and grounds basically are needed. Important, it's a service mount connector, so not a bulk grid array. It's also a more cost-effective eh, in terms of uh, component cost, but also processing cost is a little bit easier and more reliable. It's a signal connector, but the shield can transfer the four amps. That's important. Yeah, and as I mentioned, it can also be a partial shield. It, it meets all the requirements for the AI chips, 16 gigabits. So that's not crazy high, high, high speeds. Quite a lot of mating cycles, depending on the plating, up to 500. So that's that's pretty damn good. And, you know, to prove, you know, the, the proof that it is like vibration resistance, of course, is the US car. It's meeting the US car requirements, uh, the V2 requirements. And with that also, the higher well, and pretty low temperature range. Um, to 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 sum it up a little bit before I go, go to some of the application, yeah. So it's it's high density, yeah. So you can combine low speed, high speed kind of signals. Sixteen gigabits, so meets all the requirements. So you can combine this Ethernet, USB, Display Port, everything in one connector. Reliable dual beam con um, uh, contact system, so vibration resistance, also reliable during mating over time because this needs to last in an application um, it's uh, has this uh, compact design yeah we so we specifically decided to have this special grid to save as much board space as possible because it's quite a lot quite a big connector for this this kind of application vibration resistant because it's us car uh, v2 tested uh, the offers the design flexibility with the open pin field size and uh, so Really, really good, I believe, um, the connector system meeting those requirements for these boards with chips, which need to transfer multiple uh, signals, high-speed signals, and even power to these kind of applications. And if we talk about application, I mean, this is typically what it's aimed at, right? Yes, it's ADAR, ADAS, yeah? So remember, it's all kinds of different subsystems. So can be a LiDAR system, can be a radar module, uh, a radar module for industrial can be radar module for uh, automotive, especially the data management uh, par portion of it. But you can imagine this also applies for defense systems, uh, factory automation, uh, measurement and instrumentation, robotics. You have these autonomous robots walking, uh, um, driving around warehouse systems, etc. So th there's a lot more to it, and especially because this connector also comes in lower pin count i mean 198 is still quite a lot yeah but then it comes into play for medical um ultrasound ct scanners servers yeah we also even we designed in this connector for a printer yeah so developed for others so it's really proven vibration resistance high operating temperature so that makes it also very interesting for um, many more applications outside of um, uh, e-mobility, I would say, uh, as I mentioned, um, uh, defense, medical. Uh, and those guys like also automotive standards because it's it, you know it's kind of a proof that you um, uh, are meeting um, vibration resistance and, and tough demanding environments. All of this you can find on our website. Yeah, so you will get that package, you will, here's the link. Uh, so you have that data sheet, the product presentation, specifications, obviously, with more detail on on, on signal integrity, how you can assign pins, uh, application specification, etc. Currently, we have four um, partner members tooled, so they're already available. Um, that's the 550 position and the 660 position that relates specifically to some others applications and that that the printer application I I, I told you about. Um, but molds are, you know, flexible um, since we're using the same kind of pins um, for all. Uh, we can easily, fairly easily, um, expand to um, new new versions. So we will continue to to roll out uh, this product to give you a kind of an idea. You know, what is the 
the cost of such a connector, I mean, the distribution by cost typically for um, the D550 position is, is around um, $25 a piece. And you might think, well, that's a lot of money. Well, take into account if you have yeah, those pins, uh, uh, number of pins, if you calculate it down to um, the price per pin and, and the amount of space it consumes on the board, I mean, and, and I guess that's how you should look at it. The applied cost is pretty damn good for such a connector. If you especially compare to products which are out there in the market already, which are typically bulk grid array, expensive to process, difficult to process, um, which do not have a dual beam contact system. So for vibration resistance, um, uh, in terms of vibration resistance, not as good uh, and not aimed at demanding applications. Anyhow, that uh, I guess uh, concludes uh, this, this presentation. I provided you uh, a little bit of background on why we developed this and what is so specific about Densistech, rather than going flipping through a couple of slides, um, uh, uh, the typical product presentation, which you can find, as I mentioned, on ACS.com. And I guess, Greta, that, that opens it up for questions. Yes, great. Thank you, Heis. Yeah, so we will open um, up our Q&A. So if you have any questions, we do have the Q&A button at the bottom there. And Heis, I do have some questions for you. Uh, my first question is regarding how Densistag is shock and vibration proof according to US card 2 V2. Mm -hmm. Is this relevant to other markets and applications? Yeah, e even though it's an automotive, typical automotive standards, right? Um, also industrial environment and medical, they really like this kind of standard. They know it's, uh, component engineers are very familiar with it. Um, and and it's, and it, and in fact, it's a very tough one, right? It's even, uh, more tough than the European LV214 standard. So if it's US car uh, proven, that, that's a proof of um, reliability. No, it's de definitely valid for other markets. Thank you, Heis. And we do have some questions coming in. The first one is, how does the cost compare to competitors? And how is the MOQ compared to competitors? Uh, MQ is similar, I would say. Uh, cost is the component cost is uh, also similar to to others, but like I said, I mean it's applying to different markets and different specifications. In terms of vibration um, um, resistance, I believe this is this is a better solution than um, the two main other uh, products in this 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 area. So again, I mean. Component cost is one thing, but also look at the requirements in terms of vibration resistance, uh, higher operating temperature, et cetera. That's, that's what you should look at. Uh, so applied cost is what at the end uh, matters, I would say. Thank you, Pais. And our next question is, what is the MOQ for new designs beyond the four tooled part numbers? Yeah, so if we talk about new, new, new designs, right? So if there's no... Um, uh, exact position uh, available, you should think in, in terms of 50,000 uh, pieces a year, 50K. Uh, that's a kind of opportunity where it makes sense to tool another position. Thank you. And our next question is, is 198 about half cost and volume? Sorry, I, I didn't get the question. Is 198 about half cost and volume? Well, the, I mean, to, uh, to tool it, it's it's the same kind of volume, I would say, right? Uh, but yes, it it, it is uh, approximately half the cost. Yeah, yeah. Great, thank you. And our next question is: Might there be a leaded version? Uh, I'm not sure what is meant by that. To be honest, yeah. you you mean like a? Uh, I mean, maybe the, 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 the person who asked that question can put it in the in the Q and A. Mm -hmm. uh, so John, if you can can en enlighten me on this question, I'm sorry, part of my ignorance is. Ah, okay, yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, we can do a different kind of uh, uh, plating. So uh, yeah, okay, I got you. Yeah, um, so yes, we can do different um, uh, plating styles. So if you uh, require a leaded version, sorry, yeah, <laughs> um, then th that is, uh, that is uh, uh, possible. Uh, we know certain markets still require lead and, and we can do so. Thanks, John. Thank you, guys. And why do you claim that surface mount is better than ball grid array for this kind of connector? Well, it's a wider 
connector, right? I mean, uh, it's better in terms of uh, process stability, I would say. Uh, like I said, I mean, heat dissipation is more critical, I would say, for bulk weather array uh, products. That's why we, uh, we and others cannot go like really wide uh, for these type of connectors uh, because that tends to be more critical. But surface mount, uh, that's that's a little easier because the paste is on the on the PCB. Awesome, thank you. And my last question is about the shield that can carry 4A. Why would I need an optional shield if I can use signal pins to transfer power? Yeah, so top of my head, I mean, you can carry 0.8 amps over a signal pin. So you can, yes, you can assign uh, uh, several pins uh, for, for current. Uh, however, you also need to take by default a safe margin into play of 25%. So then, you know, you take quite a lot of space. And also board, uh, PCB board routing is a little bit more um, tricky, I would say, if, if you do so. So it's easier to use the shield. And as I mentioned, that eh, the shield can also be a partial shield. So we can have several sections. So you have more options for, for current to be, 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 be transferred. Thank you, Heidi. That was great. And that does conclude our Q&A. Thank you for joining us today for our MPI Spotlight on Densus Stack from our Basics Business Unit. And thank you, Heist, for your time and expertise. Yeah, thank you. And thanks for the opportunity. And thanks, many thanks for all the uh, good, uh, good questions. Thank you.